right now on Five on Your Side at 10. He was in college working full time. Now he's one of many homeless camped outside City Hall. I tried to find resources to help uh, college students with housing. I, it's no, no resources for anything. The city's plan to put roofs over their heads. Plus tonight, a St. Louis face facing off on The Voice during blind auditions. Did she turn a chair? But first tonight, hail pounds parts of the area where the largest chunks of ice fell and why it may be a loud night for some of us. That's heavy hail coming down tonight in Wright City. Scattered thunderstorms have been moving through the region for the last couple of hours. And that has us starting in storm alert tonight. Good evening. I'm Mike Boyd. And I'm Ann Allred. Some areas are still seeing heavy rain and hail. The threat remains overnight. So let's get straight over to weather first chief meteorologist Scott Connell. Ann and Mike, we've seen these scattered thunderstorms rolling through the region tonight. Some of them have been producing hail in most of the metro area. It's been heavy rainfall and relatively smaller hail, less than an inch in diameter. That's the threshold for severe weather. But we've seen hail up to the size of ping pong balls out between Warrington and Innsbruck and then over towards Forestell in that area of Warren County and upwards of larger than an inch, which is the point at which it does damage in through Wentzville. Now we still have one severe thunderstorm warning. It's this cell down right along Highway 30, sliding east of Cedar Hill right now and pressing towards Interstate 55. The hail core with this right at this moment is just off to the east of Cedar Hill. Where is this going? It's headed towards Highway 21, heading towards Antonia. You had a quarter of an inch of rain in about 15 minutes earlier today in Antonia, and you're going to get another round of pretty heavy rain here. Here's what we have going on to the west. The other storm back in Franklin County, that's weakened now, so that warning has come down. We also have showers and thunderstorms across the metro area. None of these in St. Louis or St. Louis County particularly strong, but they are keeping us up tonight. You see more storms developing back to the west. We'll continue to monitor these storms through the evening hours and overnight. We're talking mainly smaller hail from here on out, but this is what it looked like in Wentzville. Uh, getting your fall leaves off the trees a little sooner than you would think out in Wentzville given the hail tonight up to the size of quarters. So the remainder of the evening and overnight, more scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some of them will have some hail. Most of it's going to be small downpours for some, but not everybody gets good rain overnight. We'll see you in a few minutes Ann. Remember, you can get the latest weather first forecast anytime by texting the word weather to 314-425-5355. You can also share your storm pictures and videos by texting them to that same number. New tonight, more tents are popping up outside St. Louis City Hall as more homeless people move in. Our Robert Townsend spent the day talking to those living there and looking into what the city is doing about it. He's live tonight at the corner of Market and Tucker. Robert. And I've never seen anything like this, especially on the grounds of City Hall. Back there is the growing homeless encampment. It's catching so many eyes for so many reasons. More than a month ago, there were two, then a couple of more went up, but now there are at least two dozen tents outside City Hall in the heart of downtown St. Louis. Tents that have become makeshift homes for unhoused people. I lost my job due to homelessness. I got put out of our home. And their pets. I can't count the many times I didn't cry to my wife. Gino McCoy and William Clay live at the encampment with their pregnant wives. The Clays have been here for the past month. The McCoys moved to St. Louis two weeks ago from Phoenix. The only way we would be able to get into a shelter, my wife would have to go in by herself and I would be out on the street with the dogs. It's kind of crazy, but you know, it's better than living under the bridge. Many of the people living in these tents are right under the office of Mayor Tashara Jones. The singles, couples and families planted signs in the grass as part of a protest. They, they don't care too much about people and somebody got to voice this. I, I want to see something get done about, you know, 
homelessness. Mayor Jones wasn't available to talk on camera. Her spokesman says the city partners with a network of housing and service providers to identify opportunities to get more people on the path to permanent housing. Kathy Connors is executive director of Gateway 180. The shelter serves women and families. It's that affordable housing that is needed that is that really important part of the recipe to end homelessness. Gino McCoy's finally landed a new job. Because I wanted to better myself because of the future that I wanted to give my wife and our, our future kids. Now on Friday, the Board of Aldermen will introduce the unhoused Bill of Rights. President Megan Green says the bill will create universal policies for how the city addresses encampments like this. Sanitation will also be looked at. I can tell you this, the trash is definitely piling up here on these streets. We're live downtown. I'm Robert Townsend, five on your side. Tonight, a suspect is in police custody after a woman was shot in the face inside a North St. Louis store. The shooting around 5 p.m. at the Family Dollar in North Florissant and St. Louis Avenues. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Tonight, the North County Police Cooperative continued its mission to improve relationships between police, police and the communities they serve. Brent Solomon explains how it's trying to keep neighborhoods safe. Operations. Call it a family reunion of sorts. Smile, Hanley Hills. And the 77-year-old people here know as Buttercup is front and center. So we can meet and greet other people. I'm sweet as a buttercup, can't you tell? Actually, it's on my car license plate. That's your nickname. That's my nick. That's what they call me. She wouldn't have it any other way but to be right here, right now. I love the people. I get out and meet the people. I help in the village whenever they need me. They all know Miss Buttercup is willing. The Hanley Hills resident joined neighbors in Vanita Park for this event at Mayor James McGee Park Tuesday night. It's basically their version of National Night Out. It was too hot last month, so we scheduled it for this month. Still, Corporal Corey Hawkins Bird wouldn't miss the moment to build relationships with the neighbors he serves. We know that the residents typically don't come to us uh, with their issues. Moments like this help bridge the gap. When they will come to us with their problems and we can kind of tackle them head on because if we don't know about it, we can't solve it. The North County Police Co-op has two officers devoted specifically to community engagement. It helps show the community those in uniform are people too. They treat us like family. When I call, I say, this is Miss Buttercup. Hopefully I never have to call and they'll come. They know exactly where I live. I wish I had a sign that said, I love my police officers. The police chief here tells me the department solves nearly 100% of the cases that come their way. He says that wouldn't be possible if not for the people who have made it a mission to partner with police. In North County, Brent Solomon, five on your side. Organizers hope these events will encourage more residents to attend monthly meetings and watch meetings which are sponsored by the police department. A two mile stretch of road in St. Clair County, Illinois, back open tonight. The Frank Scott Parkway in Shiloh and O'Fallon is being widened from two lanes to five. Drivers contacted our I-Team last summer after they saw no one had worked on it for weeks and a large portion was still closed. The county engineer says reinforcements were missing in 1,400 feet of the surface after the original pavement was complete. Construction workers had to rip out the new pavement to replace the concrete. They add that despite that unexpected delay, the project was still completed ahead of schedule. Tonight, the St. Louis Blues hitting the ice for a preseason game. Yeah, the note teamed up with BJC to help fans defend against cold and flu season with free flu shots. Our Laura Barcheski talked with health care professionals at the game about the importance of all this. Laura. Well, Mike and Ann, BJC officials tell me this event here at the Blues preseason game kicked off their 20th year of free flu shot clinics, and they say it's important now more than ever. There it is, Sundquist, he scores! While Blues players are taking shots on the ice, their fans are getting a different type of shot in the arm. The experts uh, recommend you get your flu shot, annual flu shot early just to make sure we get that the boost of immunity as much as we can. Uh, to get going into this flu season. BJC nurse manager Nicholas Bauer says it could be a tough flu season, but experts have prepared as best they can for the different strains of influenza. We're fortunate enough with 
um, obviously like Australia and the Southern Hemisphere, things like this, we can kind of see the flu that's coming and we can help prepare for that. And that's really what a lot of our vaccines are made from is we kind of get a heads up as to what's coming to help make sure that our flu vaccine will hit as many strains as possible. Blues fan Camille McHugh says just like hockey is important to her and her family, so is protecting their health. It's absolutely amazing to be able to share this experience with my daughter. It's our first Blues game back in two years. We just got back from Germany, so we're getting our flu shot knocked out. We're going to see some preseason Blues hockey. We're super pumped. She says it's something they do every year and has seen how it can make a difference. I mean, I think it's just really important. We have some immunocompromised people in our family, so you know, it's a small effort on us to take care of our family members. Bauer says while it's good to get it early, it's never too late to get a flu shot, and they have many more free clinics coming up. We're preparing for the worst, hoping for the best. So I think if we can get these, if we can get people in the community with their flu shots, things like this, we hopefully will see a, a normal flu season. BJC officials said they were able to give out over 300 flu shots today and they have two more free clinics coming up on Saturday and Sunday, which you have to have an appointment for, but we'll have a link so you can do that on KSDK.com. Reporting live from Enterprise Center, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. Tonight they celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month at St. Louis City Hall. Celebration in the rotunda also included awards for those who've made significant contributions to the city's Hispanic community. A teenage country singer from the small town of Foley, Missouri, was turning chairs tonight on national television. Oh, the queen of country turning her chair. 16-year-old Ruby Lee wowed all four co coaches with her yodeling skills during tonight's blind auditions on The Voice, and she ultimately picked who else but the country legend Reba McIntyre. I can get so much knowledge from her because she's done it all. She's seen it all. She's met so many amazing people. She's played places that I've dreamed of playing. You know, she has so much, you know, knowledge that she can just share it with me. It's, it's incredible. And 2020 Waterloo high grad Eli Ward's Blind Audition airs later in October, and you can watch The Voice Monday and Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock right here on 5 on Your Side. Tonight, a new lawyer to a stinky mess in University City. It's tons and tons of fish that are just sitting there rotting, so that's not, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> the warning for dumpster divers. It's never too early to start saving for a child's college education. Tonight, the plan that could double your savings. And we continue in storm alert tonight, tracking thunderstorms that are producing some hail down in Jefferson County. Right now, the first storm that moved east of Cedar Hill, that's weakened a little bit, but now the one southwest of Cedar Hill, that's picking up some steam, maybe producing hail larger than quarters. We'll see you back here in a few minutes as we track.